right. I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about the misunderstood love of God. How God's love can be misunderstood. And the reason I want to talk about that is because that can be very dangerous. Amen? I'm going to take my time this morning. It could be very dangerous, misunderstanding God's love. Praise God. What if we sat here this morning and we thought the Lord was Santa Claus? Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. Bad. Very bad, right? All right. That would be misunderstanding his personality. That would be misunderstanding everything. What if this morning we sat and we thought God's love is kind of like the love Oprah talks about? Oh, no. No way. <laughs> Would we be right or wrong? wrong. So, see, it can be wrong dangerous. Wrong. It could be dangerous. I want to give you a couple of glaring examples uh, because it could be very dangerous to misunderstand God's love. And He doesn't want His love misunderstood. And it's very important in the last days to understand His love and to not misinterpret it to ourselves, most of all, because the Scripture clearly tells us do not be deceived in the last days, right? Jesus was very clear about that. So this morning, uh, very tender-heartedly, I want to talk about the love of God and how He's expressed it to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that is the, that is the great expression of God's love. The great expression of God's love is through His Son, Jesus Christ. If we're to know love, we're going to know it through Jesus. Are you with me? Amen. We're going to know through Him. So, here's a verse in Romans 5, chapter 8. It says this, But God commendeth, that means demonstrates, His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the first thing that we have to understand about the love of God is that we, you know, we basically had nothing in us for him to love that he could just look at and say oh my goodness I just love I just love that person now he created us so of course he loves us but the, our behavior our lifestyle uh, whatever we did and whatever we said was probably not very loving before we gave our lives to Jesus and uh, th it didn't count for much believe me so God had to do something. And He commandeth or demonstrated the love of God to us, the love of the Father to us, by sending Jesus to us. We know the verse John 3.16 by heart. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So... Uh, we, we have to understand that when God repeats something to us over and over again, He wants us to what? He wants us to get it, right? Praise God. I know Susan has to repeat stuff to me two or three times to make sure I get it. And I'm glad she does. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, some of you have no problem understanding that and believing that this morning. Amen? I told you I was in a good mood. Praise the Lord. And, and, and so, you know, he repeats stuff for our, for our benefit, right? Especially for the men, all right? I'll, I'll, I'll just say what the women are thinking right now. Especially the women get it maybe the first time, the men. Sometimes you've got to get it two or three times, all right? So, another verse. Although that other verse that I just read was a very good verse. Absolutely wonderful. God demonstrating his love to us. And while we were sinners unlovable he died for us Jesus died for us and he sent Christ I'm trying to focus on this morning is this John 1 John 3 1 behold what manner what manner so the word manner means what kind of love see that's important in the last days we have to know what kind of love the Lord loves us with and he loves humanity with amen and so just being good to Old, old ladies and old men and helping them across the street is, is not, you know, is not really demonstrating the love of God. What would demonstrate the love of God better is to preach Jesus Christ to them and then help them across the street. 
Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's God's love language. The Father's love language is Jesus. Amen. All right? Write that down, please. <laughs> That's, good. That's his love language. Susan has a different love language than I do. We're, 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 together, there's a whole lot of love in our house. All right? So uh, that's the Father's love language, to send His Son. Right? So behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. So He's bestowing love on us. So get your umbrella, turn it upside down, and get a whole lot of His love. Amen? In your, in your, in your basket. All right? Behold what love, manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. That's big. Actually, uh, some versions say the sons of God. So the sons of God are also what is called, are, the angels are called the sons of God. The Elohim, the, the uh, spirit beings, are called the sons of God. And so we get to be called, just like they do, the sons of God. Now that is major, beloved. That's major. Amen. We, we praise God. We get the name that the Elohim get. That is, that's so important to understand. All right. So this is the kind of love and affection that God is pouring out upon us. And, and so that's what, what causes the, the joy in our hearts when we understand that. When we understand how much we're loved and how we're loved, it makes a big, big difference. Because God really is, is loving us with an eternal love through His Son, Jesus Christ. Very important. Amen? So, to understand the love of God, we have to understand what happened in the beginning. It's very, very important. And, and what the focus of God's love really is. All right? What is the focus of God's love? All right? John 1.1 1, 1 says this. In the beginning was the Word. All right? That's Jesus. We all know and understand that. The Logos. The Word. And the Word was with God. When was the Word with God? In the beginning. When I was a young boy growing up, I had this understanding that that Jesus was born uh, when, of the Virgin, of the Virgin Mary, in my Catholic upbringing. Very little talk, even though it was in Catholic doctrine, I was never really taught that, that Jesus was in the beginning with the Father. Never was taught that. And so when I found that out, it was revolutionary to me. Because then I could understand the love of God and not have a haphazard understanding of His love. That, that before the foundation of the world, at the beginning, the Word, the Son, was, was with God. And so was the Holy Spirit, right? Verse 2 says, He was in the beginning with God. Can it be any plainer? So I said, in the beginning, God, uh, in the beginning of the sermon, God repeats things. He repeats things for a reason because He wants us to get it. All right? He was in the beginning with God, verse 2, verse 3. All things were made through him. Through who? Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow. And without him, nothing was made that was made. That was revolutionary to me. I didn't, I didn't understand that. And, and to understand that, you know, Jesus wasn't just this afterthought that God had for me. This wasn't his, oh, well, it's so bad, I better, I better have a son and send him to, to die for Ed's sins. It was in his mind before the creation of the world. And I don't know about it, but I'll tell you, it, 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 it turns my crank, let me tell you, to know that and to understand that and to be in the dark so many years about that and to have that revelation when Jesus came into my heart. I'll tell you, maybe we need to sing that next week, Brenda. Since Jesus came into... All right, anyway, I don't want to give her too many ideas. Uh, verse 4, in Him was life. Praise God. That's why we prayed against this abortion in Wyoming. Even if it's chemical abortion, it kills the baby. So it says, verse 4, in Him was life, and the life was 
was the light of men. Life is light. Death is death. Death mm -hmm. is death and darkness, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So he's bringing us into an understanding of his love. His love is light. It's there's no darkness in his love whatsoever. Even if you think it'll do you some good, it's not there. Life was the light of men. And verse 5, And the light shines in the darkness. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that His light arrested you one day? Stopped you dead in your tracks? It did that for me. Changed my life completely. And shined into the darkness that was in my light. In my life, rather. But he said this, after the comma, look at it. And the darkness did not comprehend it. And you see, that's the problem. Darkness, the people that walk in darkness, do not comprehend the love of God. Mm -hmm. You must comprehend the love of God. It's important. The light of God will flow into your soul if you do. If you misunderstand it, all right, there's darkness. Very important in the last days. Now let's listen to the testimony of John the Baptist for a moment. This is John 1.14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So the, the Word that was in the beginning, right? Throughout the Old Testament, into the New Testament, born, incarnated of a virgin, alright? It says here that He was made flesh and dwelt among us, and guess what? We beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. That's important. The only begotten means one of a kind. There's only one of Jesus. Jesus is part of the, of the Spirit. You know, He was in the beginning part of the Spirit world, obviously. But a much, much higher rank. Amen? Much higher. Alright? One of a kind. So there's only one Jesus created by the Father. Not many ways to the Father. Not, you know, all kinds of different religions to the Father. Only one way. Jesus Christ. Full of grace and truth. He's full of grace and truth. Alright? So, what two words go together real well in the New Testament. Grace and truth. truth. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going slow, just so we'll just pick up all the nuances of what the Almighty God is, Almighty God is saying. All right? Full of grace and truth. This is what Jesus was. Full of grace and truth. Verse 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Or demonstrated him. All right. Anybody in here seen the Father? How, how how have you seen the Father through the Son? Yeah. Are you with me? Because why? Because God manifests His love in Jesus to us. Very important, under, uh, at least understanding. So we have to go back to the beginning and understand the the, the first part or the principal thing. From that, how many of you have heard the word, uh, the principle of first mention? Wherever the, uh, a word is first mentioned in the Bible, that's probably its purest meaning right there, is where it's first mentioned. And the same thing, in the beginning was the word, all right? We, get, we understand the purity of Jesus when we understand he was in the beginning. Now, it's interesting, I'm going to read you something out of the book of Job, I don't have it on the screen. But it's Job 38.4. So if you're taking notes, write that down. Verse 38.4. This is what Job uh, was said. God, God said to Job, there, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? And all the sons of God, the Elohim, okay, that's not just, that's not just uh, one or two angels, that's all the angels, all the angelic hosts, said to uh, to uh, to uh, Job, all right. Where were you when all the sons of God shouted for joy? Where were you? 
And it's, it's important to understand that the foundations of the earth were important to God for us to understand how much Jesus loves us. Amen? Most of the Pharisees of Jesus' day had no intention of receiving the light that Jesus brought. Do we realize that? Hmm. When we read about those Pharisees, we, we don't give them a, a Jew, I call it a Jewish pass. A lot of Christians give, you give, give the Jews a pass. We don't give the Jews a pass here. They have to know Jesus. They have to know Jesus. They don't get a pass. He was the Savior from the foundation of the world. So if ever anybody talks to you about salvation on rach, racial issues because they're part of national Israel, you should understand that they have to know Jesus. If they're going to be saved, very, very important. That was the message from the beginning. So that you, again, are not in any way deceived. Alright? So, in the beginning, Genesis 1.1, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. And darkness was on the face of the deep. So I want you to understand that as we pick up the story, and you know, I'm not a fan, I don't believe there has to be a gap between uh, Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1. Or billions. Yeah, right. Billions. Could have just happened. That's right. And, and Holy Spirit was what? Brooding over the waters. And God said, we need a cleanup on aisle 5. And right? Is it, I believe that's what he's saying here. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. The deep means, means chaos. The, o the, the oceans and the seas in this world are, are pictures of chaos. If you don't believe that, where does the beast come out of in Revelation 13? The sea. The sea. Mr. Chaos comes out of the sea. Now I know there's the second beast that comes out of the earth. So th there's double trouble there. But you understand that, that, that God... This is not the first thing or the first time this ever happened is in Revelation. It happened back in Genesis. That's why we're told when you study the book of Revelation, study the book of Genesis too. A lot of people growing up, they told us to study Daniel. That's helpful. But Re uh, Revelation and Genesis are the books, really good books to study together. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And God said, what did He say? To clean it up. Let there be light. Hallelujah. So what is the answer to chaos? Light. Light. Even in our day, what is the answer to chaos? Light. In the book of Revelation, what is the answer to chaos? Jesus. Jesus. Light. Yes. Exactly. And there was light. How about that? God spoke it. There was. And God saw the light that it was good. There was no bad in his light whatsoever. Unbeknownst to a lot of people in this world who think he's both, he's not both. That's a lie. Amen? God is not light in darkness. He is light. That's why we have to understand the love of God. Very, very important. Amen? It's not just a trivial matter that, oh, he loves us, and every once in a while I get this warm, fuzzy feeling in my body because I know I'm loved by God, and so on and so forth, and all these charismatic crazy things that happen uh, in people today. We know God loves us. <clears throat> well, I was thinking about this as you're preaching on it, and you know, we're taught how Jesus <laughs> comes to save us. Yes. He does that, but He created us because He wanted us to yes. walk in holiness. We were, Absolutely. in the beginning, He wanted us, so that gives us new value when you really let that sink in. Certainly. He wanted us and He created us to be with Him. Absolutely. It's not like it was just a rescue mission of exactly. strangers. But, yeah. And what, what, it was at first there was a garden. What's going to be at the end? A garden. We're back to the garden yeah. again. Yeah. Amen. Which, but he, he really wants us. He loves us. He does. Mm -hmm. He absolutely loves us. Amen. And, and when you understand His love, uh, you can face anything. Created, you really can. We're created for Him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Not for ourselves. We're created for Him. Praise God. When we, under, when we understand that, it helps us out a lot in life. 
We don't fall prey to a lot of these uh, pitfalls, we'll call them. Verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. He divided it. There's a division there. There's not a little bit of this and a little bit of that. All right? He, there's a division there. And the good is on his side. The darkness is on the enemy's side. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, so evening and morning were the first day he even divided those, amen, and provided luminaries in the sky to give some light in the darkness. And we could go on and on, we will not go on and on, but I'll tell you something, it just warms my heart to even talk about this this morning, amen? Still talking about the beginning. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God who at sundry times, what does sundry times mean? means different times, different occasions. Mm -hmm. and, and divers manners, there's that word manners again. Manners, the type, the kind of love that God gives. The kind of revelation that God gives. Divers manners. Spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Praise God. But verse 2 says, Hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son whom he hath appointed heir of all things. All right? It's already predetermined. Praise God. So it's not a, well, I wonder if it'll happen. No, it will. Praise God. By whom he also made the world. Who? Jesus. Right? He made the world. He spoke the word. And all the worlds came into order. Who being the brightness of his glory. This is Jesus and the expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He rules and reigns from that position right now. He sat down at the right hand. What do some other scriptures tell us? He's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Isn't that amazing? Amen? That he's mm -hmm. right at the right hand of the Father. And you know what? I thought to myself, he's making intercession. Uh, is he, what is he doing? It says he's sitting before, before, next to the Father. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's not kneeling before the Father. He's not uh, crying out or anything like that. All he, he's just speaking to the Father. You know, we'll take Brenda back there for, I don't know why I'm picking on you, Brenda, today, but, you know, Brenda's gone through something or whatever, uh, a, a problem or a trial. Now, I know you never go through problems or trials, but, <laughs> ooh, look at that look. Amen. But anyway, and, and what is Jesus doing? Is he at the, at, the, at, the, at the knees of the Father, grabbing the Father's knees and shaking him and saying, you've got to help Brenda, Lord. You got No, he's he's... Ruling and reigning at the right hand of the Father, and he's talking to the Father. Just speech in heaven is intercession. All right? We're, we're taught all kinds of ways to intercede here on earth, but in heaven, it's just, Father, I come before you. Brenda's having a hard time. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's take care of this right, once and for all. Let's clip the enemy's feet out from under him. Praise God, and Amen. it happens. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yep, verse 4. Here we go. Being made so much better. Who? Jesus. Than the angels. Right? The angels are the Elohim. We're the sons of God, just like the Elohim are sons of God. But he was made higher and greater than the angels. And hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Why? He was in the beginning mm. with the Father. How does... The, fa the, the Father will show His love through angels. Sure. But the main part, the main manifestation of the love of God is through Jesus Christ. Amen? So, Amen. Uh, Pastor Ron Merritt posted this up on uh, Facebook and I thought it would be nice to post on a slide. Something is seriously wrong when the world is offended by everything <laughs> but sin. Offended by everything but sin. All right? Darkness is what's supposed to offend the world, not light. And yet it does. And what, this is what we're going to see as we transition into the last days. 
we're going to see people hating the light, people despising the light. So what's happening now? We have to understand what happened in the beginning. We have to understand what's happening now. John 3.9, this is very simple. This is the condemnation that light... What condemnation? What is, what is that? <laughs> means condemned. Useless, right? You're, you're condemned. Hellbound. This is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men, here it is, loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, he could have just put a period after men... Uh, well, he could have just put a period at light came into the world. Or he could have put a period after the men love darkness rather than light. But he put a period and he spoke up until he said, because their deeds were evil. We have to understand that. Evil deeds mean that men, people, love darkness more than light. In other words, they love themselves more than they love the Word of God and who they were created for. Are you with me? This is why we see. This is the trend today. This is why, the, again, the church has to understand, comprehend the love of God in, in, in all of its facets. All right, number three. Because this verse is going to talk about we, meaning the disciples, the apostles, we've heard the Lord, we've seen the Lord, and we've touched the Lord. And we've, we've done that too, haven't we? Has everybody in here heard the Lord? Mm -hmm. Amen? Have you seen the Lord? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Lord? I see Him all the time. <laughs> Not physically. Not physically, no. We're talking spiritually, okay? So spiritually, we've heard the Lord, we've seen the Lord, and we've touched the Lord. Amen? We've embraced the Lord. How many of you give the Lord a, 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 a nice hug? Amen? Amen. All right, he's not physically there, but you can still love Him and embrace Him and embrace all that He is. All right, this is 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. That which was from the beginning, all right, we've already, here it is again. How many times have we said He was there in the beginning, right? That which we have heard, all right, this is where we get this from, that which we have seen with our eyes, and that which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. Praise God. We have handled the word of life. What does that mean? That means that we've experienced what Paul experienced on the Damascus Road. I, I, I hope everybody listening, hearing what I have to say today, will understand that there was a stark difference between before you were saved and after you were saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I hope we understand it because it, th this is what the scripture teaches. Not everybody has a, a Damascus Road, I understand, uh, salvation, where you go blind, literally blind, and, and you... You know, you're, you're off, you fall off your horse and uh, you have to go to a, a man of God to pray over you and get your sight healed and restored. But all through that time, the Apostle Paul knew that it was God working on him. He didn't, he didn't sit down in his blindness and say, my goodness, you know, what, what, in, the world, what in the world did I do? He didn't do that. He said, what do you have for me, Lord? Speak, Lord. Tell me. What do you want me to, to know? It, there was a big difference there. So that which we've heard is like the, the word of life, the Damascus Road experience where we've handled the Lord. We've tasted the Lord. We've touched the Lord. We've experienced the Lord. Praise God. And because we've experienced the Lord, what also have we experienced? The love of God. All right? Number two, verse two. This is in parentheses, by the way. All right? This is a parenthetical thought. For the life was manifest, that's Jesus, the life was manifest, we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested to us. So what do we do with it? 
What do we do with it? We don't just help again. Old ladies across the street, old men across the street, but we, we share that love with them. We talk to them about that love. Amen? We manifest it to them. Verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that also may have fellowship with us, that ye also may have fellowship. Underline that word fellowship. I'm going to talk about that until we finish this morning. That, we may, that uh, ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. I want to tell you something. When you understand the love of God, when you, when you understand it in its completeness, encapsulated in Jesus Christ, your joy is full. Your joy is full. Amen. And, and some people have difficulty comprehending joy. They really do. But inside of you, should there should be a joy that's full of the glory of God and the richness of God. That you may have, find it difficult to put into words, but that joy should be bubbling up on the inside of you and me. Praise God. And so we shouldn't get so bummed out about what's going on in the world. Amen? And by the way, the word fellowship, the word koinonia is used because God wants His people to be together. God wants His mm -hmm. people to be together as often as possible. We know that the book of Acts tells us that. Amen? Why? Because part of God's plan is for us to have fellowship. That's why we come here on Sunday morning to worship the Lord and to have fellowship with one another. Both of those things are important to God. Amen? That's why I need church. I could just sit home, study my Bible. I could sit home and watch maybe a couple of programs and this and that and the other thing. But I have to have fellowship with other Christians. It is so important. And the fellowship that we have to have is based on the love of God. Mm -hmm. Not the fact that I like being around so-and-so because they just make me feel warm inside and, and accepted. And, you know. That's why this whole thing of acceptance is just so such phony baloney nonsense. Amen? There, there has to be a fellowship. And what is the basis of fellowship is the truth. Amen? You, we, we can't have a fellowship if we just base our fellowship on feelings and how we feel today. That's why we come to church whether we feel like it or not. Why? Because there's a bigger, something bigger there. It's called fellowship. Fellowship with the Father and with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, and with one another. Amen. That can't be duplicated if we sit home and, and uh, sit home and eat crackers. Okay? All right. So, number four. And this is the final slide what is the basis of all fellowship of course it's the love of God that's what I'm preaching on today amen the basis of all fellowship but understanding that love of God and walking in that love it, that's important too one of the, those verses we read was that that you know we'd walk in the light as he is in the light amen so first John 1 5 all right and this this will get uh, 1 5 this will get us to the end of first John chapter 1. And then hopefully next week we'll go into chapter 2. This will be part 2. Uh, 1 John 1, five says this, then, This then is the message which we have heard of Him, and declare to you that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. No darkness. And many church doctrines today will tell you that God is a little bit naughty. He's not naughty. God is a little bit adventurous and sometimes it gets into naughtiness and then it just gets gets way out of line, way out of line. There, what what did we read? God is light, no darkness in him. So what should his church look like? What the, should the sons of God look like? Both angels and humans. 
We have fallen angels. We have fallen people. My goodness. If we say, verse 6, that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. Oops. Could that be any clearer? And do not the truth. So if you walk in in the light, what do you got to do? You got to do the truth. Where's the truth? In Jesus, right? In the Word. The Word. The Word. Mm -hmm. See? And so you can't be too uh, fanatical about the Word of God. You can't be. You can be fanatical maybe in uh, crazy interpretation. But if you interpret it the way you read it, you're on solid ground. Amen. Verse 7. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Who's that talking about? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the church. We have fellowship. But we must walk in the light. There it is. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. There's that deception. And the truth is not in us. We can also say if we we say something isn't a sin that God says is a sin, are we walking in light or darkness? Anybody? Darkness. Darkness, darkness of course. Yeah. We deceive ourselves. And our, our problem is in self-deception. Our problem is that we've got to make the love of God something that it isn't. And we, we should be standing on what the love of God is because if we stand on what the love of God is, it will propel us into the will of God and His purposes for our life. And it all begins with... We, we, we make love secondary. The love of God is not secondary. It's primary. But the true love of God. Not the phony one that we hear about from so many places. And verse 9, so important for us to understand. If we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. How much unrighteousness? All, all of it. And believe me, He used the word cleanse on purpose. Because the word mean, cleanse means out. Cleansed out of our life. Praise God. We can go before God, be serious before Him, know that He loves us, know that He's full of grace and truth, and understand that He's going to not just forgive us of our unrighteousness and our sins, but that He's going to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we don't have to sin that way any longer. Are you sure about that, Pastor Ed? That's what it says. That's what it says. Who's doing it? Not you and me. We're, we're admitting to God. We're, sub, we're uh, su submitting and, and listening. But who's doing it? He's doing it. Why? Because He loves us. And this is the manner of love that God wants for us. Praise His name. Verse 10. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. A liar. Who's going to ever have the authority to stand before Almighty God and call Him a liar. No. Oh, I know they're going to be doing it when He comes back. When He returns, people are going to be gritting their teeth, mad at Him, saying he's a, you know, he's a liar and this and that and the other thing, shaking their fists at Him. But what's going to happen to them? Destruction. He says, we can't say we've not sinned. We make Him out to be a liar and His Word. Listen to this. His Word. We've been talking about the Word. Capital W, small w, whatever w. Amen. It's Jesus Christ. It's the message of Jesus Christ. And He says that if we do this, His Word isn't in us. Not at all. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I want His Word in me. I want, I want the world to know that, that you know what, what, what is motivating me what is the big iceberg underneath my, uh, my little peak that may stick out of the water is the fact that Almighty God, He just he calls it as He sees it in my life. And I listen and I obey His Word. 
and I behold his love in a different way than I've ever beheld it before. And it's the truth. And it gives me the strength to walk through whatever comes against me. In Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. We just give you glory, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for these words from the book of John.